This is Josh Share. How are you? Hi, Josh. Where are you talking from? From uh, Miami, a little bit south of you. All right. So we've got two Floridians, and the event is actually taking place in Florida. This is the final 15 boards of this round of 16 match, and I suspect we're going to see the Blanchard team swinging a bit. That would be East West, Hammond, and Justin Law on the Blanchard team are going to somehow need to gain 73 imps and 15 deals. Yes, quite a task, uh, but uh, I think they're ready to get their gloves off and uh, and swing for the fences. I'd say one in a hundred would be the odds of uh, picking up 73 imps. Uh, one thing is they'll be taking swingy actions. Uh, when you're down 40, you, you swing a little maybe, or 50, but 73 is uh, so many imps that you really have to go crazy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Larry. I, as I always point out, 73 is a lot of imps, but it's seven swings. So uh, when I'm playing in that kind of situation, I count them on my fingers and see if I'm getting close. No need to uh, to rush to swing to try to swing. So you're saying with 15 boards to go. With 15 boards to go, I would wait a board or two and see if things were going my way. With 15 boards to go, even that few, I would wait a board or two and see if things are and if they are, just continue and not make any attempt at swings. And if they're okay. not, then perhaps uh, swing from the rafters. Well, I don't think I've ever had a plus or minus 73 session, so not quite sure how to perpetrate such a session. I've had one that I remember in Paris, and when we used to play imps in the in the Cavendish format, and I think it was only eight boards, and we had something like 70-odd imps. It just happened. Sometimes it just happens. Now, down 50, I would wait and see. Down 70 is so unlikely. If I had a little chance to do something sexy on the first board, I, I would take the chance, not knowing, you know, there could be three or four flat boards coming. So I, I would take a chance. I wouldn't go crazy on the first board, but I would try something. Take your shot. This looks like a hand from the last match. Eight diamonds. Look at this. Sometimes you can swing in exactly the opposite direction by taking an extremely conservative action. So there's there's, there's a lot of opportunities for judgment in bridge. So if uh, north south arrive in three no trump, three no trump by south, they're almost sure to make it. It would take a double dummy defense of West leading a club to get his partner in for the Queen of Hearts through. Otherwise, we would just expect um, South to easily make three no Trump. Uh, he might end up in five diamonds, though. Maybe North has a three hard second negative available here. Yeah, I start out with a two heart second negative in my in my style, but perhaps he has. Or else perhaps he'll mention his uh, shaggy spade suit. Okay. Well, so they have wrong side of this. Which queen do you lead as uh, East? Well, queen of hearts, obviously. Well, looking at all the cards, I'd figure it out, Karen. But at the table, um, I, I think I would lead my longer suit, although there's some argument that if you lead your three-card suit, you're more likely to hit partners five. Well, I think... The nine of hearts is what would sway me. But meanwhile, it's not going to be three no trump. No, and five diamonds will have no chance unless the defense uh, makes a mistake, such as West laying down the ace of hearts at some point. doesn't seem likely he would want to do that. No, not at this level. So what does Wes come down to? Let's say he leads a spade or a diamond and the declarer starts running things. If West 
last three cards are the Ace of Clubs and a Doubleton Ace of Hearts. That won't work very well for him. He'd have to figure out not to come down to that end position. Well, they're going to have some uh, chance to practice their discards here, I think. Oh, this was definitely a lead out of turn auction. They certainly got me. I was thinking of what to lead with West. Uh, I'm sure some of the hundreds of people watching knew I was not paying attention. And with uh, the strong hand on the table, uh, it's going to be much easier to defend. In case you're wondering, players at this level do lead out of turn, and this is exactly the auction that could cause it. I have sometimes see them lead out of turn, and no one notices. They play out the whole deal. Had West led out of turn, I think North would have thrown his cards on the table in a hurry. So while this is going on, a little bit about the pairs here, uh, all young by bridge standards, certainly all under 40. Um, you know, in their 20s and 30s. Woolridge and Hurd have been a regular partnership for at least 10 years and have won several national championships, I believe. And Dwyer and Bathurst is a newer partnership and a uh, lot of potential for both these pairs. So presumably there was enough signaling going on here that Bathurst will know what to keep. He won't come down to a singleton ace of clubs, an ace and a heart. That would be suicidal. So Woolridge and Hurd North South that we're watching, they're on the pair, they're on the team that is trailing by 73 imps. They're on the Blanchard team, so that is not going to help with a comeback attempt. No, every board that goes by is to the advantage of the team that's leading, obviously. So East, of course, uses the fourth suit forcing here. If he didn't have that available, he might just a bit a blunt 3 no trump over West's two clubs. But it is possible 3 no's not the right contract. It's, He's, it's worth bidding the fourth suit to see if you can learn something else. Here, certainly, spades plays well. At team scoring, there's no big deal because three no Trump makes easily nine top tricks with the spades not five zero. But four spades is certainly aesthetically a much prettier contract where you can trump hearts in the shorthand. True so, for poker I, I find it interesting that up. Kevin Bathurst chose to rebid two clubs rather than raise uh, to show his at least three card support and a singleton here. Yeah, Josh, normally going through this sequence, bidding the clubs and then raising spades tends to show a stronger hand, but that's I, I agree. I would have just bid two spades to get it off my chest the first time. Absolutely, and would, and so would I. 
but it's a question of how dogmatic they are about four card raises. Maybe they've become French. <laughs> so, so three diamonds is apparently some sort of artificial bid, which scares me that they would have to memorize what that means here. Uh, maybe it shows three one in the majors and five four in the minors, but that requires a lot of memory. Such an agreement. Yeah, they're young, Larry. They have they have lots of memory. I don't have any, so I keep it simple. Is that <laughs> AISS system, Kiss? I'm, I'm with you, Karen, at any age. I've seen the 20-year-olds and the 40-year-olds and the 60-year-olds and the 80-year-olds all playing too many methods and having mix-ups. I mean, how often does a fourth suit game-forcing auction come up to begin with and then to have artificial steps over it for the one time it comes up per, you know, two days? It's just too much for me. Well, this three nose surprises me here. It clearly should be natural in this auction. Uh, East knows if East does in fact know West's shape. Well, it looks to me like they mixed up the whatever their agreement was. I think if they knew what they were doing, they'd be in spades. They're going to survive, and it's only going to cost them an imp or two, since you would expect something like four fifty at the other table and four spades. I mean, I, I think West meant three diamonds as artificial, and East took it as something else. Well, oh, there we go. There's the explanation typed right in front of you, just what I was guessing there. So, Karen, see, even at their age, they, who can remember these things? <laughs> exactly, Larry. So uh, maybe they'll come to our point of view in a while. Meanwhile, they've gotten to a nice, safe contract. Okay. Well, um, speaking of swinging, I'm told that Hammond and and Lowell read six spades with the East-West cards, which could be very exciting. So we'll see if they make it. Um, it might depend on, well, let's see, without a trump lead, won't they just take the first 12 tricks in six spades? That's a, that's a very playable contract. And how are the diamonds? Are there enough... Uh, Entries to get that suit going if uh, spades are led? Well, let's see. If spades aren't led, although we're just told now, we can see at the bottom of the screen that a spade was led. That's what we're told. But without a trump lead, you would cross rough 12 tricks with the spade lead. The question is, can you set up the diamonds? The problem is you have to trump three diamonds in your hand, and then you can't also trump arts and dummies. So I'm guessing a spade lead might set six spades. Who's declaring, if I may ask? Do you know the orientation? Only of the maybe the best declarer ever. That's the man I would pick if I had to play my life. <laughs> I'd pick him for my partner always. But I don't see what he can do, because if he trumps hearts and dummy, he can't rub diamonds and then be able to draw Trump. But I don't know. Someone, someone who can click Gib can probably figure it out. But it looks to me that a Trump lead was a killer. But I would love to be in six spades if I was down 73 M's because it's not the contract that rates to be reached. Well, if this were a match point event, uh, Bathurst and Dwyer would get close to a zero for this result, but this form of scoring, not a big deal. Plus 400, you can live with.
the best way to remember such methods, whatever that three diamond meant, bid then, whoever was right and whoever was wrong, is to have it come up. To, once it comes up and you experience the wrong result, that helps you remember it next time. So I always found when learning new methods, the best way to learn it was to have an accident first with it. That's one way. Uh, what I like to do actually is get in one of the bidding rooms here on uh, Bridge Base and bid a million hands with that, that kind of auction. You can set them up. You can set up hands for whatever distributions and so forth you want and then bid a million of them. And uh, that helps as well. Yeah, it does. I used to do that with David when we had a new method. I would generate deals to bid, but then if it doesn't come up for four months, it's not so good. Right, so you need to keep practicing. And your point about having uh, learning by disasters is very well taken. I certainly have had that experience. Yeah, that's the best way to remember it because you were competitive and, you you know, you have a disaster in, on, in the limelight and that shocks you into remembering it more than the 30 or 40 practice deals four months ago. But I agree, that's a, a good way to practice a new convention is to, if you have the ability to generate practice deals. So here we see a strange looking two spade bid by Woolridge. I think I can tell you what's going on. It's not like they play intermediate jump over calls. I would be shocked. But he is down 73 imps, and it's a reasonable shot opposite a past partner to mix things up a little bit. You don't likely have a game when your partner couldn't open the bidding. So preempts opposite a past partner are a good chance to mix it up anyway. So I kind of like that two spade bid at this stage. Yeah, and it's especially effective uh, opposite a nebulous uh, diamond. Uh, I think East-West are playing a strong club system. A little harder for them to compete effectively. You know, he has the perfect hand, Will Ridge, that if his opponents get a little frisky, he could double with his three aces, a nice way to create a little action given the state of the match. So um, apparently Hammond uh, has no way out of his six-paid contract after the Trump lead. He's about to go down, and that's going to swing 11 imps to the team that's already up 73. So Putting the be a large margin. further out of reach, but uh, good try. As you well, said, we're going to stay here and chat about the deals anyway, even if even Karen and Josh, even if the match isn't close, what do you say we have some fun discussing these next 10 deals and see if we can entertain everyone? Absolutely. Yeah, although well, I'm having trouble hearing everybody, so can you guys hear me okay? I hear you loud and clear, Josh. Are you having trouble hearing me? Uh, now I'm hearing you better. Well, people are telling me I'm too loud, in fact. You're very loud. I'm going to Al Hollander said I blew out his fillings. I've adjusted now the volume on your uh, speech, so let's see how that goes. Oh, I'm surprised that Kevin Bathurst did not uh, lead uh, Trump to prevent the diamond rough. But I guess the diamond rough uh, creates a natural trump trick, so it just breaks even. No need. Yeah, Declare is just playing for over tricks here. Uh, watching him play two spades, making roughly three, is not exactly the highlight of this event. So 
I can tell you that things will get pretty exciting tomorrow. We'll be in the round of eight in the main draw. There will be some pretty exciting matchups. Uh, next to Rodwell and Levin Weinstein on the nickel team will be coming in. They had a bye, as will the number two seed with Zia on that team. And there will be eight teams competing in a two-day 120-board match. And opposite that, even the teams that we're watching lose today will still be in the event vying to become USA 2 in the loser's bracket. So it should be an exciting week coming up. As I always say, don't give up your seats. Josh, now I know you're speaking, but I wasn't hearing you at all. Ah, you can hear me now? You should be able to hear me. Yeah, absolutely. An end point. Well, again, it doesn't really matter what Kevin well, Bathurst plays try. back here. Oh, Kevin's not on lead. There's always a Kevin on lead if it's east-west. Uh, that is true. That is true. So Kevin Dwyer had a spade to lead and no end play. So it's eight tricks and next port. Thankfully. Joel's usually not one to play hands, even simple hands, quickly. Another one of the diamond suit. one of the newest vogues, the newest trends is to play transfers on this auction. One of a minor double to play transfers, starting with redouble to show hearts, hearts to show spades. It's becoming more and more popular, and that's kind of the future of the high-level game, more and more transfers. Even over one diamond. I've seen it a lot over one club, so now it's over one diamond as well, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, just transfer well, works so well. Mostly the strong club players who play over one diamond double. It's partly because uh, you know, it's one diamond double, redouble. Nobody really knows whether they can afford to pass out one diamond, redouble. So even if the opponents are in trouble, it's hard to get them. So I don't know with Dwyer's hand. I, I think I might just take a shot at four spades when my partner jumps to two spades on the theory that you're never going to know if your cards are the right cards or the wrong cards. And, you know, I can picture a game opposite basically king, queen, fifth of spades and, and a doubleton heart. So I might just, I think I might just bid it with his hand. I know it's only 11 high card points, but in support of spades, it's a beautiful playing hand. The note on the three diamond alert was that they have a good bad to no trump and for the spectators uh, this means that three diamonds was a serious three diamond bid not just a light competitive one. Yeah, that, he would uh, to no trump if he wanted that, to make a, a less serious bid. Yeah that treatment Karen was one of Marty Bergen's original uh, treatments about 30 years ago, that good, bad, two, no Trump, and it became quite popular. Also, Woolridge down a million, might as well take a shot at this, the good old four Trump double. It's 
quite a good contract. Let's see what's going to happen here if the defense just kind of minds its own business. The cleric can actually pick up the trump suit, can he? Ace of spades and another spade. He can pick up uh, five clubs and four spade tricks for nine tricks. And guided by the double and the bidding, I think he will guess the spade suit if he needs to. So I think he can and just make this now. He can tr well, yeah, he can trump a diamond and the dummy, ace of spades, eight of spades, covered. Club over to the ace and another spade and finesse the seven. Sure, guided by the bidding and the double, I expect he'll easily make this. Yeah, the danger, that's the danger of the double. Yeah, and I'm sure he wouldn't double first board of the match. It wouldn't occur to him. It's just, why not at this point? It would have been a more brilliant double if he had Jack nine third of spades, and they would have manufactured a trump trick out of thin air and declare him his guesses the suit. Yeah, or they found a brilliant, brilliant double W defense of a low diamond lead to the queen, followed by three rounds of hearts. That. Yeah, that's what Gib would say, wouldn't it? I don't think any Earthlings can make that play. No. That's why we don't uh, involve Gib in our discussions. <laughs> well, that was a nice try, but now it's going to be 690 for four spades of double to making five. Yeah, and now the finesse is, is a safety play, even. Yeah. Well, that's surprising, but it's not going to matter, is it? He's still going to be able to make four easily enough. Notice the careful queen of clubs, in case clubs were 4-0, that was the only way to pick up clubs, although they would have gotten roughed and he would have gone down that way. Well, this is very careful. Why was he playing clubs? If clubs were 3-1, wouldn't South rough it and cross? I guess it couldn't be, but still. Yeah. That that makes more sense. I made four only, which is uh, just a fine result. I expect the pace of play to really go quickly now because all the players realize with half, you know, with six boards gone and nothing but bad things happening to the trailing team that they know that there's really nothing left to play for. So the play should go quickly. So uh, Dwyer opens a precision one diamond and uh, Kevin Bather spits three clubs, which is uh, presumably a we can with both minors at least less than invitational. It's probably somewhat wide-ranging. Good methods for this deal. Magic. But I don't think they're going to keep North-South out of game. So now it's likely just going to be five clubs doubled. South has an easy card-showing double here. 
Oh, I think so. No reason to extend himself to try to make a five-level contract. So probably 500 against 620 or 650, so slightly good position for Dwyer and Bathage. Here's to here. Yeah, and they can't make uh, uh, five of anything, at least on a club lead. Well, I would think even they can get a rough against five of either major anyway on leading the other major. True. Well, well, although well, this is all, they could finesse the diamond, come back, take a pitch. Anyway, we're, we're stretching here. I think it's normal for North-South to just make 620 and four of a major or 650. Well, they know they can go down 500 or 650, but had the colors been anything other, the vulnerability differently, East-West would, wouldn't be bidding this way. That's why when you hear experts talking about bridge, every time they give each other a bridge hand, they don't start out with king fifth, queen fourth, two little ace and one. They start with the vulnerability. They'll say, you're vul against not, you hold such and such. Because it's a very big part of the game. North leads the Queen of Hearts, which is Rusa now, second best from touching honors. And South, they're playing upside down count and attitude carding. So his attitude is, yes, I like this. He plays his lowest heart, the six. Alternatively, he could throw the jack, which when you throw an honor, shows the card below it. The jack would show the jack in ten. Correct. This event is being played in an unusual place. The reason I say that is it's the U.S. team trials, which lately has been in a more central location like Chicago or more towards the middle of the country. But uh, this is in Florida, which makes it a lot easier for the East Coast players, especially the Floridians, as opposed to those who have to fly from the West Coast. and change three time zones, but I don't know what the politics were behind holding it in Orlando this year. Well, it was in Las Vegas last year, so that's sort of a West Coast uh, venue. Oh, well, that's fair. I always find and as a player, it's, it's, sorry, Karen, it's much easier to go West and play than to come East and play jet lag-wise. Most people have less problems with uh, with jet lagging heading west than heading east. Uh, but that, both cities, Orlando and Las Vegas, are noted for having inexpensive housing available and plenty of uh, restaurants and uh, other, you know, other places for, for meals and so forth. They're both relatively inexpensive places for players to come and play. See, that's funny you said that about heading west versus east. Uh, I guess I'm a morning person and have a lot of trouble heading to the west coast and uh, at nationals and staying up until 11 uh, when the 7.30 session actually starts after my bedtime. They've had this event a lot of times near O'Hare Airport in Schaumburg, Illinois, which that, that's always a consideration, too, near a major easy airport to get to, which Orlando is and Las Vegas. And I'm told next year it's in Phoenix. Yeah, the one time I played in this event, it was three years ago, it was uh, near O'Hare, which was quite quite a convenient place. I had fun. We upset quite a few teams. You must like the starting times then, because this event starts in the morning and you're done by uh, 8 p.m. I do. I think that's part of the reason I actually played well when I played at this event. Yeah, I like the later starting times. 
you know, there's been a lot of debate recently for the North American Championships whether to move the times from the, the traditional time is 1 p.m. for the afternoon session and 8, 7.30 or 8 p.m. at night, but they've been trying this uh, 10 a.m., 3 p.m. I think, are they doing that in Atlanta this summer? They're doing it in Atlanta, but I thought that was that Philadelphia was supposed to be the last one because there was a lot of discontent about it. I know a number of people who simply uh, are boycotting that uh, schedule, and uh, I'm not going to Atlanta for a number of reasons, and the schedule is part of it. Ah, and I'm going to go to Atlanta for the two weekends, and the schedule is part of why I'm going. Well, that's I actually think they should have the West Coast uh, Nationals uh, starting at the earlier schedule and the East Co Coast Nationals uh, starting at the later schedule so that uh, if you are heading west, you, are, you don't have to uh, stay up that late. Well, they've done surveys, and certainly there's a difference between the players, the top experts who are playing the national championship, as opposed to more of the masses who are playing regional events. I think most of the, those players prefer, like the early starting time. A lot of them are older people, an older demographic, and they prefer to, to not uh, to be able to start at 10 in the morning and be done with their day at a reasonable hour. So it, it depends on which events and which level you're talking about, too. Well, I'm the older demographic. I'm 71, Larry. That's the younger demographic, Karen. Have you looked at the average age of the ACBL lately? Ah, so true. <laughs> In fact, I'm yes, we, quite sure we the average age... We were the youngest age... when we... St what is yeah, the Karen... average age? I think the average age in District 9 is 71. We can maybe someone can check that. Uh, district yeah, but we Florida. happen to be probably the oldest district. A lot of retirees in Florida. But I think the ACBL average age is it's certainly mid 60s. It might be 66 yeah. or 67. Plenty of uh, retirees here in Nevada too. Okay, back to bridge. South Oman's a no trump. Uh, some people play splinter responses, three spades, but there's two problems with that here is one, is North worth forcing to game? And the other problem is a three spade splinter, you like to have it deliver a four card heart suit because otherwise your partner will never know if there's a four four heart fit. So I would rule out a three spade splinter here. Right. Well, some people play uh, uh, three spades showing five, four in the minors. Yes, if it denied four hearts, then it's, it's a stretch, but possible. Certainly the path chosen was very conservative if it's a 15 to 17 no trump, but it's apparently 14. They were swinging. That's their swinging action. Well, it's reasonable to pass the north hand. I mean, it's not like anyone has a good system bid for that hand. It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You can guess to do something with the north hand, but, um, you know, if you had two spades available for the miners, I guess that would be nice, but hardly anyone has that available. Club suit is interesting. You need to get rid of that nine and eight of clubs or else you'll end up blocking that friendly five four suit. Yeah, players at this level, uh, of course, routinely play the ace and then the nine under the king. Uh, another reason to start clubs with the ace, uh, I thought you were going to say, Karen, it's an interesting suit because the only four zero break you can pick up is with west and therefore you should start the suit with the ace technically 
starting the suit with the king is pointless because you can't pick up that four That's zero. correct. So it's, that's a good lesson suit. If they were if they were four zero, you likely would have heard from the opponents. They don't usually leave you in one no trump when one of them has a void. They usually even vol against not. Someone finds a way into the bidding. Well, they'll be sad after making a quick nine tricks. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't there a spade lead? They, However, uh, nine with, tricks. Yeah, with they the forgot, spade they forgot lead. to continue. Well, they would have, against three no, I think they would have said it. Absolutely, they would. So maybe we can post a link here to the schedule for uh, the next week. Do, some, do either of you guys have it handy to post it? Because I think anyone who's watching now might enjoy some bridge the next six, seven days. So it'll be more interesting than this. I don't have it handy. I'm on my uh, laptop since voice doesn't work on my desktop. Well, I posted something there. Um, some people can't always find the link, but or click it. Thank you, Larry. That's excellent. I think a fourteen to sixteen no trump from uh, Bathurst and a transfer, and they will play a quiet. Uh, two hearts, the kind of hands you love to see when you're uh, ahead uh, by 75 imps. Absolutely. It's hard to imagine a duller set of deals aside from the fact of the margin. These deals have been particularly dull. In case anyone wonders how these deals are arranged for this tournament, there is certainly no one involved with the decision. And this is random computer dealt hands, and nobody knows what they're going to be. Someone at ACBL presses a button, and it generates them, and someone at ACBL duplicates the boards. Some of these people don't even play bridge, and you never know what you're going to get. Could be crazy deals, could be boring deals. And I believe that each match is playing a different set of boards uh, for security, and also because they had two different matches in the same room last night. So clearly you can't have people playing the same boards in the same room in different matches. It's possible in the semifinals they will play the same deals in all matches. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They'll do that yeah, for interest the and to help reporting, yeah, because people write uh, reports in Bridgeworld, for instance, and I know Larry writes some wonderful reports about these great events hand by hand, and so it's useful to have the same hand played by uh, two different teams in the semifinals. And Al Hollander confirming that uh, all matches are playing, each match is playing its own unique set of boards. And he's also saying all four quarterfinal matches on ViewGraph tomorrow. I would be surprised if uh, they're all blowouts like we had in this round of 16. I think there'll be some close matches. Almost without a doubt. And we'll be here broadcasting them. So come back, folks.
Yeah, in case anyone, there's always some stickler out there saying, hey, why don't you guys talk about the deal, talk about the deal? Well, to tell you the truth, this is a very boring deal and a very boring part of the match. So sometimes we just think if anyone is sitting there listening, there, there might be something more interesting than the play in two hearts to talk about. So we apologize if you want us to analyze the play in two hearts. I'm just sad that I'm not playing. Well, there are seven more boards coming up, and hopefully some will have uh, points of great interest. Well, as but you say God, that, God. This, this, this looks like everybody's four triple three with ten points. Yeah. Not quite, but, but you know what God, I mean. God has been dealing boring, boring hands right now. Yeah, I mean, even if... Yeah, I'm sure North South want to swing, but there's just been nothing they can do. I mean, even Zia with his glass of brandy wouldn't be able to do anything here with the South hand pass, pass, ball against not. Well, Justin supposedly uh, made it interesting in the other room by opening a strong no trump in the in fourth chair on his uh, four triple three thirteen count. Well, let's upgrade those tens. Actually, here's a little something I can say from an educational point of view. I I find that Ace Jack Ten, look at West's club suit, is an underappreciated holding. Uh when I have Ace Jack Ten in a suit, I think of it as six points, not five points. Because if you think about it, let's say you have Ace Jack Ten and your partner has three little and you have entries to your partner and you finesse twice, you're 75% to get two tricks out of it. Whereas if you have ace-queen low, which is six points, you're only 50% to get two tricks out of it. So I recommend ace-jack-10. Count it as maybe if you can't take the plunge to six points, just be aware that it's close. Yeah, of course, uh, ace-jack-10 opposite king-third is two and a half tricks, while ace Queen X opposite King third is three tricks, so it does work uh, both ways. Uh, but certainly, uh, having good spot cards in conjunction with higher honors are are badly undervalued. Oh, Josh, Ace Jack Ten opposite King third—that's three tricks for for experts, don't you think? You know the old Sol yeah. Sobel story. Yeah, I, I, I always know who has the queen. In fact, both of them do. <laughs> There's so many stories about Ace Jack Ten opposite King Third. Karen, do you want to tell the Helen Sobel story? Do you know it, or maybe I'd get in trouble? I, I'm just trying to think. I know I know the story, but I think you better start it. All right, let me get in trouble. All right, well, the, the Helen Sobel story, and there's, there's a great Al Ruff story about it, too, but I mean, experts pride themselves on ace-jack-10 opposite king-low-low. It's a two-way finesse, and you can figure out who has the queen. Uh, apparently, Helen Sobel, it was before my time, who was a very attractive woman, uh, I think she used to be a rockette or, or one of the dancers, she uh, was a great player as well, and she contended she could always guess who had the queen as, if she was playing against two men, because what she would I do is she'd look, yeah, she'd look at both of them and she would lift her skirt a little bit. Back then, women wear skirts, wore skirts when they played bridge, and she figured if she lifted the skirt a little bit, the guy who had the queen was too concentrating on his hand wouldn't notice, but the guy with the three or four little would, would be watching her. So that's how she did it. Am I in trouble? No, I, I'm just thinking about, about a story where there was some story where they were – uh, they were tricking her, and each of them had the queen, and she looked around and looked around and said, I can't figure it out. I think you both have the queen. I think that's attributed to somebody else. but Yeah, I think that's Johnny Crawford. Uh, that's someone in Texas who uh, the queen wasn't on the, on the floor or something like that, but there's so many of them. But, of course, experts, we, you know, we're kid, kidding aside, ace-jack-10 opposite king-low-low, low, uh, you know, there's so many ways to, to figure it out and you know, throw them in, read the cards. I would guess an expert's going to get it right, maybe 2.8%, uh, get get three tricks. Uh, you know, an expert's going to get it right like 80 90% of the time. 
Well, my favorite is bidding a grand slam with that being uh, the key thing in Trump's. Uh, where, uh, you know, a lot of times they routinely lead a trump for you. So if they don't, you routinely play opening leader to have the queen. Right. And, of course, there's the old standard, the the biggest uh, trick of them all is lead the jack out of your hand from ace-jack-10 and see if they cover or think about covering. Yeah, and if you possibly can do it, on an earlier trick where you have all the cards and see how they react to that jack. If you have king, queen, jack opposite the ace, leave the jack and see what your left-hand opponent does. And then leave the jack that you don't have the queen. Is it over yet? How's one note trump going here? Taking a lot of tricks. So at the other table, presumably they'll be in three no trumps since uh, West opened one no trump. At least he's having a little fun over there. We can see three no trump went down one. It's posted. All right, well, there's five deals to go. The 24 imps a deal would be 120 imps to the trailing team. That, of course, is the How maximum. How many 24 imp swings have you seen? Well, I've never been involved in one, which is amazing, considering I played eight years with Marty Bergen. Sure enough. Oh, but there are some. He did go for seven thousand once, but I wasn't there for it. Seven thousand will, will get you into the twenty-four imp zone. That's an impressive number. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we're just having some fun. The comic one no trump over call. I mean, if they're going to deal you that south hand at favorable, you're going to do something fun. Now, now he's going to run. And we'll see if he starts How many pressure times off. do you think he'll run? Two clubs, then two diamonds, then two hearts for the doubling rhythm? I think East West will be able to brush it off and just someone will bid three no Trump, but we'll see. Now, that double is not uh, strictly a penalty double. Yeah, I imagine they don't play this auction it was forcing, so he needs to double again to show real cards to set up a forcing auction. Well, if they settle for defending here, they'll, well, which heard will have a pickup a little late, but they'll go for something like 300 against 630. Well, we can see the other table result was uh, Hammond and Law stretching the six diamonds, which has an obvious flaw. I guess Blackwood would have solved the problem. They didn't use Blackwood. They want a diamond by West, a spade, two no, six diamonds. Interesting. I, I did not expect uh, Kevin Dwyer to bid over the 3 no trump bid. Well, maybe he's expecting four spades from the takeout double of two hearts. Karen, do you remember about 20 years ago when Jeff and Eric, Mextroth and Rodwell, psyched a comic one no trump overcall against one of their sponsors and he never hired them again? Oh, no. I hear... <laughs> That's a wonderful story, though. Yeah, this, you know, uh, this has been around a long time, this ploy of oh. overcalling us no trump white on red. It's... 
Well, well, I think they actually zero. had that part of their si- si- official system at one point. Uh, it was only later that it became illegal. Re- right, it was on their Reese convention and card. Shapiro had had a yeah. similar hand, but they had a little information. This was about the hands held high and hands held low, and uh, an opening bid of one no Trump was made as a psychic, knowing that partner. Uh, or ostensibly knowing, it depends upon your feelings about whether they cheated or not. I believe that they did. I, the one no Trump psych was made with uh, no points opposite, no points across, and I think they just got away with it. The recent Shapiro, wasn't their method signaling how many hearts they had with their fingers? That was part of it, but there was a high low that was also part of it that indicated a good hand or a bad hand. So they played a lot of methods. Yes, yes they had they had quite <laughs> well, a few methods. Well, well, Karen, you know they did confess. Uh, Shapiro confessed. Uh, it was a deathbed confession. They did. He did admit it that they did it. I know, but there are certain people who still never believed it, including Sammy uh, Kehila, uh, who who just worshipped Reese and never believed of him that he cheated. Uh, see, I heard they claimed that they were trying to demonstrate that cheating, how cheating could be done. Well, you yeah, can do that lots was, of claims. They did claim that. That would be like I rob a bank and I get caught and I say, well, I was just trying to prove I could rob the bank. Well, well, I don't think it's necessarily a convincing uh, defense after the fact, but uh... yeah, that was their defense. They were showing that it could be done. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, as, and there were two books about it: "Story of an Ac- uh, oh, no, that was a yeah, "Story of an Accusation" yeah. and uh, yeah. the Great Bridge Scandal. Trust, uh, but Reese, yeah. aside from Trust, that, that Trust Scott and right? Danny uh, Kleinman, both wrote books. And that Reese wrote a book. Yeah, I do want to say that in spite of that rather large blemish on their record, that I think Terrence Reese is maybe the best bridge writer ever, certainly in the top three or four. His books, if you're trying to learn, oh. are tremendous. If you He's a fabulous that, writer. A I, would, I would recommend to anyone who's a serious student of the game that they get hold of some of Reese's older books and go through them. There's so much to be learned from what he wrote and how he wrote it. Yeah, I used to read uh, the expert game before every tournament just to remind me about uh, timing and control issues. Yeah. Anyone in Las Vegas can go to the UNLV library and I find my bridge library which I donated to the uh to the games department, gaming department at UNLV. And there are a lot of Reese books in there. I wanted a, my library to go to a place where serious students of the game could find it and use it. I loved the uh, over my shoulder style. I kind of copied that myself in a lot of my writing. I love uh that he would give you your your hand and he described the opponents. He would say, well, you're playing against a middle-aged woman wearing a red shirt and the guy on your right is fumbling with his keys. And I just loved the way he would set the scene for those books. Marvelous. They were marvelous. I read them over and over and over again. Fortunately, we don't have uh, really any scandals going on lately at the high level. Uh, the fact that we have screens helps a lot. I'm not saying the, that we've been scandal-free, but for the most part, all the top pairs today are pretty much known to be clean. There's no accusations, uh, especially, I, I don't I don't know, if you think of like the top five pairs today, ten pairs, I don't think there's even really any whispers going on. Yeah, and that's especially surprising given uh, the amount of money that uh, is at stake uh, in some of these contracts. 
you kind of know if you're being cheated. If you're a top pair, you, you can smell it when something fishy is going on. I mean, your opponents really, you know, you, you know what's normal. And if they're making the right lead on every deal, for example, you just, you, you'll, they'll get found out eventually. I will be right back. So, do we really want to talk about this 4-3 spade fit? Is there any danger here? Let's see. He's knocked out the ace of diamonds. He can afford to lose a spade trick. He can trump a heart in the dummy. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Is there anything that can go wrong here? Well, he's got slight issues. He can... He's worried about trumping the hardened dummy and not being able to get off dummy. So by playing this club first, he's severing any communications against the late round rough. I was asked by one of the other commentators with a message to comment on uh, David Bird's book. David Berg wrote a recent book about uh, opening leads, and I'm not thrilled with the uh, conclusions. He was talking about don't lead from kings, and they've been using a lot of double dummy analysis on opening leads. I don't really find that that's a good way to do it, because too many, if you're looking at all four hands and analyzing the opening lead, to me that's not quite the same as real life opening lead decisions. I don't know if you've followed any of that that's going on, Karen or Josh. No, I haven't read the book. Uh, you know, I, I find double dummy approaches to analyzing leads to be interesting in terms of getting in the right right ballpark about how many tricks people would take. But if you just use a double dummy analyzer, you know, every, everybody always guesses queens, and it doesn't it takes a, it doesn't really reflect what what's really happening. Um, but it's it's a start. Well, the computers, that's how they make opening leads. They analyze the auction, they deal out a few hundred hands and figure out what's the percentage lead. But there's a human element. Your partner is going to assume you've led fourth best and not going to figure out that you've led a weird suit and he's not going to know not to return it. I just think it, it really is hard to analyze this the way they did it in that book. Right, but very few uh, hands depend on you know, leading low from a doubleton or leading, you know, fifth best when you're normally supposed to lead fourth best. I, I, I don't think it will change the statistical results by that much. It's just the real question is whether double dummy analysis is a break uh, is a break even for for uh, the clearer side or the defense or it benefits one side or the other. I think it sort of benefits uh, the Clarer's uh, play. Here we have, uh, I think I agree with Dwyer's decision, a spade and no trump, two hearts. Could be 5-4, could be 5-5, five, five, but two spades, correct, being back to two spades, the false preference is the standard treatment with East's hand because it keeps the bidding alive. You, you do have nine points and the Opening bidder could have 16, 17. He can't jump shift with that, so you want to keep the bidding alive. So you take that false preference, and if your partner bids again, if he's got five hearts and a decent hand, he'll bid three hearts, which you can raise to four hearts. Uh, Larry, they're playing a strong club, so West is at least somewhat limited here. So it makes the decision a little bit closer. And yeah, standard, does, of course, is um, clear to uh, false preference. Yes, and standard even more so when partner could have more. Because, uh, you know, jump shift, the spade and no jump three hearts is like, you know, 18, 19 points. So that two heart bits a pretty wide range. Uh, but granted, in a strong club system, it's limited to about 15. Well, if I had to rank the set of deals, like let's say you dealt out, if I watched 100 sets of deals and ranked them as far as exciting or boring deals, this would be number one or two as far as on a scale of one to a hundred as far as 
the most boring deals ever. Luckily, the company is good. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess this set of deals could have been exciting if the match was like tied, and then we'd be worrying about every little one imp, two imp swing. There were rarely even interesting decisions for over tricks in this set. Now, the only reason we had some swings was because the teams were swinging. Uh, otherwise, the, the, you could have had basically all flat, you know, one imp swings this, on these deals. Yeah, perhaps the only real interesting decision uh, hand was the hand with the solid eight diamonds that ended up being played in five diamonds from the north rather than three no trump from the south. Admittedly, it's kind of hard to get the three no trump from the south unless it goes two clubs, two diamonds, three no. So the two teams who come out of this event, the USA 1 and USA 2, will be going to Bali, Indonesia in September. The last time the World Championships were scheduled for Bali, it got moved at the last minute to Paris because of a bombing in Bali. So uh, let's hope things are calmed down and they can actually go there. I never been. Have, have you been there, Karen and or Josh, in your travels? I hear uh, I have. I spent uh, about three weeks in Indonesia, including uh, a week in uh, Bali. It was very. It was very calm. Now it's uh, pretty qu quiet, uh, beach resorty uh, area. Uh, if anybody's heading out there, I recommend going to the Gili Islands between the island of Bali and Lompoc. Uh, I find uh, the Kuda area of, of Bali to be too overdeveloped now. I did try to learn to surf there. I was very bad at it. The last time I tried that, I almost drowned. I was with Eric Rodwell in Australia, and... We went there to play together in some exhibition matches, and one day we went to the famous Australian beach, wherever we were, and near the Great Barrier Reef, and uh, we went out there, and I really did almost drown. It was very scary. All right, so Declarer here, what's he going to do? He's going to lose two diamond tricks, two spade tricks, and at least one hard trick, and it looks touch and go here. It looks like he's going to lose... No, he's a, he's a Trump, he's a Trump coup in spades. So on the king of diamonds, or uh, all three spades throw, in hand. Right, so he can throw he can throw a loser if they don't trump. So he he doesn't need the Trump coup necessarily. He can throw a heart loser away, and then rough something back. He can't get back and forth though to make three, right? But he can make two. Yeah, he has th he has three spade tricks and one other trick, either a heart or this king of diamonds. Right now he can he's not going to get his heart, but he can rough something to his hand and just exit. Right, he rough he, something to his hand and exit in hearts, and then scores both of the trumps at the end. Yeah, we can see that, but does he know to do that? Does he know that the nine of spades isn't just going to fall? Let's see. Let's say he roughs a diamond and then plays a heart to the ace. Well, can can he just? He's got six tricks now. There's nothing to it. He could just lay down the king of spades and play a heart to the ace, and he roughs with his winner. So yeah, he's going to make it easily. Lots of choices. Of course, the players can't see the scoreboard, but they know. They, it's just 
watching the deals and what's happened, they're all 100% sure it's over. So even though Bathurst's taking his time here, they, they all know that it's over. North-South might get the three now Trump here, which I think should go down, but one never knows. Well, it's certainly a stretch to get there with the flat 12 opposite that south hand. Ah, instead Joel takes another wild swingy action. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, looking at north sand, it's hard for him to believe that could, could be winning action. So even with the what looks to be a miracle club holding, it's it's not really a miracle club holding. Declara has to lose two club tricks and the ace of spades at least. So don't even think about it making. Yeah, the the miracle club holding is is ten and one uh, uh, Jack X. So you take an inter finesse of the nine through the ten and one and then pin the 10 on the next round. Right. For example, west two of clubs moves over to the east hand. No, that, no. What, well, there's several. Yeah. Right there. How about king 10 doubleton or queen 10 doubleton with west? Yeah, any, any 10 and 1, any 10 and 1 with west you can pick up. Right. King 10 or queen 10, if you guess it, you lead low from the a6, and the guy has to put up the king or the queen and then smother the 10. I mean, you're always, you're always going to play for that because those are, that's your only chance. It's not a, any choice. Well, if if you, but you, there is some guessing involved, right? If you lead a low club away from the 6 to the ace and it goes king, let's see, then you come back to your hand and lead the jack. That's your only chance. So you, it, there's no guess involved in this particular case. Karen, are you still there? Or did you fall asleep or just give up on this? Oh, a, a spec pointed out that with uh, 10 and 1, uh, you can false card with the 10 in the first round and then give the clearer the option of playing for on a 10 doubleton. So there's a little bit of poker in the position. It looks like Karen snuck out, Josh. She, she, I thought I might be the one who did that. Uh, she fell asleep. All right, two more deals, and then it's all over. This is a nice uh, win for Kevin Dwyer. He's kind of the newest on the scene here as far as all these players. You know, he hasn't had much experience in these big-time events. Yeah, he played with uh, Gavin in the NAOPs this year and won, and that was, I think, his first national win. Yes, and... Uh, I don't remember him having a run in any of the major knockout events, so this maybe could be it. They certainly have a nice team, nice four-handed team. If they were to go on and finish first or second in this event, four-handed, no doubt they would add a pair for their world championships. They're entitled to to add a pair to their team. I don't think they'd want to go to a valley four-handed. That's too exhausting for even young guys. I think this event is pretty exhausting, if, especially if you end up having to fall into the USA 2 bracket. You're playing a long time. Yeah, it's exhausting to play four-handed, although these are 60 board matches, not 64. That helps a little. And to have a match like this helps also because 
they don't have to expend too much mental energy tonight. So in effect, they're kind of fresh for at least tomorrow. It's, it's not a 60 board match, but it's 60 boards per day. That, right. That's the key thing. Right. Right. 60 per day, uh, 90 for this match, and the next few matches are 120. But yeah, 60 boards a day instead of 64 does make a little bit of a difference. Also, this is much easier for them than playing in the spin goal or Vanderbilt in that they're playing against Americans. They're familiar with them. They're familiar with the bidding. It, it doesn't take as much of a toll as if you're playing against some of the teams from Europe where you're just not as familiar and all the auctions are, are not as comfortable for you. Perhaps. I also think the top uh, team events uh, with players from all around the world are really stronger than e even the U.S. team trials. Uh, but it is nice that having these, these formats and having long uh, team matches that you, that you don't get uh, in the spin gold or the, or the Vanderbilt. Oh, this, this was without a doubt my favorite event when I did play. Uh, I enjoyed this much more than the Spen Gold and Vanderbilt for all the reasons we just said. Karen is here, but she can't be heard, she she tells me. She wrote to me. So this is a somewhat interesting hand in that North-South have a 4-4 spade fit, but they were never going to find it once East normally overcalled in spades. So now the question is, four hearts with the bad splits, can it be done? The Clara can set up clubs, but can't really get to them. Now you should be able to hear me. I've been in and out four times. Okay, well, now, that now we here, can hear you. Tell us if, if four hearts is going to make. Let's see. Declarer is going to play a spade to the king and ace, and will he be able to get two spade tricks out of this mess? This actually looks kind well, of Well, Dwyer's in this uh, discards are, are going to be interesting here. Well, he discarded too many spades, didn't he? And now he did. What if he had kept another spade and thrown a, something else? How was Declarer going to manage not to lose three spade tricks? Oh, well, he could have played a spade to the king and ace, and Dwyer would play a diamond. Yeah, it was going to be in. Maybe, maybe double dummy, he could always do it. Uh, maybe Dwyer was kind of squeezed, you're suggesting, Josh? Uh, I can't quite tell. It seems like uh, Dwyer had to throw the ace of diamonds to keep communication uh, in at least some variations. Well, this was just as good, wasn't it, though, that what Dwyer did? Because the cleric can't rough the diamond. So isn't he going to fall a trick short anyway? Which Dwyer was able to... Isn't this just as good? Yeah, the cleric the cleric's going to lose a club trick at... Yeah, there's no... What can't, happened? Can't. No. Oh, he couldn't tap him again. Is that what happened? I don't know what happened. I lost this. Anyway, the final board of the night. I promise to be sharper when it matters. So if you were in a there swinging mood, there will be plenty mood, more grits this week. week. Well, slam makes uh, even a grand slam makes here with everything being on. Seven clubs, right? You pick up the spades. Yeah, seven clubs makes with the double, you know, the double finesse in spades and the diamond finesse. Well, if they could win seventy-five m's right. for bidding seven, if they could win seventy-five m's for bidding seven clubs, they're still alive. Hmm, let's start counting on our fingers. 
even if there were three hands combined into one, that wouldn't be enough. Only 72. Oh, so somehow the operator had four hearts making in the last board. I, I was sure it went down from, from what we saw. Well, Declarer took five hard tricks and the ace king of clubs and the spade trick and a diamond orphan dummy. He had nine tricks. I don't know that we ever saw the tenth. So we were trying to figure it out and it kind of just flew by us. It's interesting that uh, South with five five and the minors doubled uh, two hearts. Uh, perhaps this was a support double and the double of one heart showed four or five spades as some people play. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm not really sure double. what's going on. Except that would be the say. only reason I can see for that double. It's certainly not a card showing double showing extras. I guess looking at just the north south hands, five clubs is probably the best contract. Well, three no's, okay. <laughs> well, that ten of hearts might work on some other day. That's not going to exactly skewer the declarer with his queen nine eight fourth. Well, who's going to do the thank yous, Karen? You, you're good at doing the thank yous. Then we can get out of here. Well, if if everybody can hear me, I'll try it. I. Uh, I want to first of all thank you too. It's been a pleasure to chat with you. Even when I couldn't be heard, I could hear you, Larry and Josh. And uh, thank you to our operator who's been marvelous. I I think that they did make four hearts on the last hand. I'm getting words from spectators to that effect. And thank you to BridgeBase for having the most amazing platform for watching Bridge. Uh, all of us are benefiting by that, watching world championships and, and great events like this. Thank you to U.S. Bridge Federation for letting us report on their uh, major event of the year, the Open Team Trials. And uh, last but not least, thanks to Jan Martell for organizing this for us. Anybody I forgot? Well, we'll uh, Andy, Andy Gumper. <laughs> yeah, I will echo all that and thank you to those of you hearty souls who sat through uh, watching this uh, blowout match. But don't give up your seats. There'll be great bridge tomorrow to see right here on this screen in front of you. Sounds good. I'm going to leave you now. I'm I'm going to bet her we'll make uh, ten or eleven tricks. Good night, everyone. Okay. Good, good night, night, Larry. I'm heading. I'm heading to see the t the tenors at uh, our wonderful Smith Center for the Performing Arts, one of the new beautiful buildings in Las Vegas. Enjoy. I'll count on it. I'm there two or three times a month. So, been a pleasure. Good night, all. Good night. Well, we're still... Oh, what just happened? Did Hurd really duck this trick? I guess he, he did to uh, cut communication. He then has to decide which is the safe hand. I guess he knows that West is the long hand in hearts, and so he will take uh, a spade finesse uh, rather than a diamond finesse. So five clubs, two spades, one heart, and one diamond, nine tricks.
so he'll take uh, his five club tricks and then a spade finesse. Anyway, thank you all. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to the uh, people on written commentary as well, and especially to our ViewGraph operator who did a great job. Bye-bye.